Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Thursday, March 10, 2011. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S., 4.30 p.m. in London, 12.30 in Bermuda, 10.30 in Mexico City. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX overseas or AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. Our birthday today, Chuck Norris, the American uh, kung fu actor, is 71 years old today. I didn't think he was that old, but he looks pretty good. Economic news is not so good. The stock market's being pounded. It's down a couple of hundred points right now. Uh, more job, uh, actually more jobless filing claims were submitted this week than had been expected. And also the U.S. trade deficit with China was up about a billion and a half dollars more than had been expected. Actually, the whole U.S. trade deficit overall was up, and that accounts, uh, really, it's due to one thing, and that is the increase in the price of oil, of which about half of is due to speculation. So what really does a number mean? Well, we'll go to what some numbers actually mean. Here we go. Um, this is a front-page story in the Insurance Day today by Greg Doby, and we've been following this very closely. It's a uh, work product of our good friend Sue Langley. It's obviously a very important project at Lloyd's, the Lloyd's Exchange. Well, they came out with an initial pilot for electronic endorsements, relatively straightforward, nothing too big, not too ambitious. Um, and they only aimed the initial pilot for the electronic endorsements at the marine sector. Again, pretty straightforward. Uh, well, the decision as to whether or not that pilot is going to be extended to other classes of business Beyond Marine has now been deferred till the end of next month. Uh, the London Market Group, which is going to be making that decision, still reiterates its commitment to the electronic project. Uh, key people involved have told Insurance Day that neither the limited take-up uh, identified in the second interim report issued by the Market Group, uh, nor the teething problems identified during the trial period represent a serious enough obstacle to stop. But stop they did. The LMG moved the go, no-go decision meeting on the rollout to other classes, which was originally scheduled to take place last week all the way to the end of April. The LMG in a statement said, feedback on the e-endorsements pilot is now being evaluated. This has provided a valuable insight into the approach to be taken when extending use of the process beyond the marine classes, the improvements to the process that have been identified will add particular benefit as we progress to the next phase of the project. This is actually sort of big news. It had been uh, anticipated that this was pretty smoothly going to be extended to other classes of business. And unfortunately, the naysayers to electronic uh, transactions in Lloyd's have uh, gained some purchase here, but we uh, commend Ms. Langley for her efforts and hope that she keeps pushing because it's important. News from Bavaria from Munich Re. This morning they affirmed their earnings target of 2.4 billion euros for this year, but they said that that target's only going to be reached if random losses in the further course of the year remain below expectations. Translation, they got hit hard in the first quarter. And uh, they sure did. First estimates, they said, of the total impacts of the Brisbane, Australia floods in January, Cyclone Yasi in Queensland, Australia, and the Christchurch earthquake uh, were a total loss of about 1.5 billion U.S., of which the New Zealand quake would make up about a billion. Munich Re said that the initial loss estimates for these events, particularly the most recent New Zealand quake, is subject to much uncertainty. This morning, Munich Re also said that uh, for 2010, they had a consolidated profit of 2.4 billion, down from 2.55 billion in 2009. Uh, for 2011, they do anticipate gross premium volume of between 24 billion and 25 billion in the reinsurance segment, and up to 18 billion in the primary business. For 2011, they're targeting a combined ratio of 97% in property casualty reinsurance. But the uh, super catch that have occurred in the first quarter mean that they need a benign remainder of the year to get close to that 97%. Well, it's spreading everywhere. Catlin reserved $125 million net of reinsurance and reinstatements to cover itself against losses from last month's quake in Christchurch. Catlin had already reported losses of $45 million for the first Christchurch September earthquake. 
Uh, they did not specify an industry-wide loss figure upon which they were basing their estimates. And sometimes you get the uh, chief executive of an insurer who uh, not only will just recite his company's uh, profit indications, but will actually lash out a little bit at the state of the market. And we have that with Michael Watson, CEO of Canopius. Uh, Mr. Watson uh, came out with uh, the information about Canopius, which actually did pretty well. They made a profit of 43 million pounds for 2010. It was down 14% from uh, the 50 million it made in 2009. Their combined ratio jumped from, jumped from 88 to 92 percent. Not bad at all. But Mr. Watson said 2010 is considered to be one of the six most costly years for insured catastrophe losses since 1980. Yet the reaction of the reinsurance markets has been to continue reducing prices. This is folly, he said. He's probably quite right. Um, Mr. Watson noted that the losses that uh, occurred in the uh, 2010 period, the cats and the large losses, added 11 points to Canopius's combined ratio. He said the Treaty Reinsurance Division actually had a pretty good year, posted a loss ratio of 47 percent combined with, uh, compared with 09's 45 percent. That is a pretty good year. Well, AM Best from Oldwick came out with some news. Um, they put uh, the rating of the Syrian reinsurer Arab Union Re uh, under negative review. Uh, Arab Union Re already had a B rating from Best. Uh, the reason for this is that Arab Union Re is 50% 50, 50 owned by the Libyan government. The Libyan government has representation on its board. And Best said that at the present time was not in a position to determine the long-term effect this will have on the company's operations. The agency also said that about 25% of Arab Union Re's business was sourced from affected areas. Uh, that's like the whole Middle East now. Arab Union Re has exposure to Libya through its branch operations where the company receives about 10% of its business. Um, the reinsurer had its rating affirmed by Best in February this year before the recent escalation of unrest in Libya. Well, XL also is on the list. They uh, came in this morning with news that it could post 70 million to 85 million in losses from last month's quake in Christchurch. Uh, they are using the industry wide loss number of 8 billion to 12 billion. XL cautioned that it exercised, quote, considerable judgment in making its preliminary loss estimate and that the final number could move significantly in either direction. Well, somebody finally took a stand, and we take our hat off to Nicolas Sarkozy. This morning, he formally recognized the Libyan opposition's interim governing council as the legitimate representative of the Libyan people, the first country to do this. Here he is pictured with two representatives of the Libyan uh, interim governing council. Mr. Sarkozy said this morning he plans to exchange ambassadors with the council. The council is based in Benghazi. Uh, rebels have taken control of that city in the early days of the revolt against Gaddafi. Sarkozy's announcement came as NATO members began two days of talks on Libya to discuss the possibility of imposing a no-fly zone. Uh, Bob Gates, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, is in Brussels. A senior American official said that Gates will tell the NATO people about American preparations for possible emergency response operations and humanitarian relief in Libya. Well, here's the earthquake map of Asia. Um, if we look over a little bit left of center, we see an earthquake uh, that occurred around the Chinese Myanmar border. It was a 5.4 quake. It hit yesterday. Uh, 14 people were uh, killed, at least 120 were injured. A uh, hotel collapsed and uh, several other structures collapsed. Also to the right, you see uh, the quake that occurred off Japan, and you still see a number of aftershocks that have occurred there. Some of the aftershocks have been as high as 6.0 on the Richter scale. There have been no indications of any damage or tsunami warnings in Japan. And in the southern, Phil southern Philippines, security forces are blaming uh, Muslim extremists uh, linked to the Abu Sayyaf group uh, in a blast that killed five people outside of a public school this afternoon. Uh, the local police chief said that Abu Sayyaf is probably behind the attack, which occurred in the township of Jolo in Sulu province. It was to divert the military's operation against them, which was occurring at the same time in the city of Zamboanga. The military was bombing them with jets and had a, uh, a limited uh, tank column attack a hideout of the Abu Sayyaf leadership group. Well, in the United States, in the northeastern part of the country, um, after a couple of weeks now of very heavy rain, 
Uh, two to four inches of rain are predicted here in the New Jersey, New York, Philadelphia area. If that amount of rain comes, creeks, streams, and rivers are going to flood. Already in northeastern uh, New Jersey, in the town of Little Falls and Passaic County, many homes are inundated, uh, highways are underwater, and people here in our area are waiting with bated breath for the typical small stream flood warning, which should be coming out any hour now. Delaware River in Lambertville is expected to crest sometime uh, uh, Friday night to Saturday morning. It's going to crest apparently about uh, 10 inches above flood stage. Everybody's keeping their fingers crossed. Four of the most destructive floods in history in the town of Lambertville, the city in which I live, have occurred in the last nine years. This is since they've begun to keep records 200 years ago. There's only one explanation for that, and that's because of overdevelopment upriver. If you pave everything, there is no place for the water to be absorbed. It just runs right down the tarmac, down the parking lots, in the strip malls, out into the river, and floats by our house, our town, and floods it. It has to stop somewhere. That's all the news we have for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. If not, thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.